Uh, hello and welcome to Pinball in the Machine. This is a podcast by Awakeners for Awakeners because we're guides, not gurus. This is where we discuss the what the hell just happened aspect of what might loosely be called a spiritual awakening. So rather than us telling you how you should do it, we believe there is no right way and that by sharing our experiences, we can help each other to develop holistically. I'm Greg and with me is my dear friend and co-host Tom and today we'll be talking about how we came to go down this rabbit hole in the first place. You might find this useful if things are happening in your life and you feel like you've been thrown into chaos because what we cover might help shed some light and enable you to realize you're not alone. So let's get started. Morning Tom, how you doing? I'm good Greg, how are you? I'm pretty good. Sun is shining. Super. What's not to like? So I guess I'd like to know what's around for you this morning on this first podcast ever. Exciting. I think um, I thought I would just spend a couple of minutes just going back to the beginning uh, because I think it's it's a nice place to start. Um, it's it's quite important to me. Um, so let's just jump in. I mean, uh, I think it was August. 2020 you reached out to sophie and i sophie my wife and you felt that something needed to happen you didn't know what it was but you needed or you wanted to connect and we answered the call uh, because you know, we, we've we've always had a lot of time for you, and we've had some really interesting chats over the years. And I think, if I remember rightly, you I think we when you talked about it later, you said that it was actually Sophie you were really kind of focusing in on. Yes. Uh, and we started just having a free conversation about who we were and what we were doing, and. I don't know which way around it was, but I mentioned something about spending time kind of visualizing things, scenarios, traveling the world in my head. Yeah. And I don't know whether that kind of pinged for you a little bit or what. Um, I'm not really sure. It, it, the thing with these things, it happens in the moment and then in the moment it's gone. So it's... Yeah. And for me, I'm finding this is happening more and more. Um, but I know that initially I was a little bit, uh, I thought, aware that you might be a little bit more analytical than Sophie. And so it might be tougher for you to engage. And yet you're the one who grabbed it and ran with it and said, right, what's this? <laughs> and, yeah. and I don't know what this is either. So we're kind of um, discovering. And I think... What's important to point out to people is you and I have having, been having these discussions pretty much weekly, nearly two years now. Um, and it, it seems that other people might benefit if they don't know what's happening. You know, something is going on, things are weird, but they don't know what it is. And maybe our trying to discover what was going on for us can help other people discover what's going on for them. Yeah. And then, and, and effectively, two things kind of struck me in that first conversation. One was, I think you just had your own funeral and it, yes. it, I was in, I was intrigued as to what that meant. Um, maybe more on that later. And the second one was this idea of um, this kind of, what, what did I think it was at the start? Maybe unguided meditation. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's been, you know, I think let's be, I remember years ago um, you actually gave me a piece of guided meditation um, and I think that's what I thought meditation was, either so, either sort of, and you know, and and then I got, we both started talking about this idea of whatever it was, unguided meditation journey, but where you 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 go into a, you you meditate or you go into with some kind of state, but with no expectation. Yes. And and every time I I started and every time I did that. I started recognizing points as I went. Or maybe I was leaving myself little markers. I don't know. 
But I got to a point quite quickly where I was I was I was in this state or whatever it was, and I started seeing things, hearing things that were interesting. And sometimes when I came out, I remembered them, and sometimes I didn't. And I started writing some of them down and thinking about some of them outside of that place. And that was the start of a journey for me. Yeah, and it's still going. I think the important thing for me is that I don't know what I'm doing, and I never really have. Um, when I got the the wake up, if you like, the, and it's happened a few times, but when I got the one of the bigger ones, uh, I didn't know what was happening. This is not my line of country. Um, and yet, here I was. And what I've come to realize is there is no right way to do this, that everybody's on their path and all of the paths are going pretty much to the same place in one way or another, I think. But what I want to get across to people is that if if you feel that meditation is for you and, and it's something I avoided for much of my life because my mind doesn't shut up, uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. But there are ways that you do it. And I would say be guided by your intuition as to how you choose to do it. I don't like guided meditation because I'm not visual, so I don't see pictures very well. Um, I, I don't want somebody telling me what I should see if I'm not seeing it. I want to know what's going on. So I think the first thing is intention. What is my intention going in? My intention may be to learn something, something, you know, uh, I may grab a crystal or listen to a particular piece of music or whatever it is. And I may say, well, what am I here to learn today? Or, you know, what's my next step? Or can you help me with this or whatever it is? But over time, what I've realized is that going into this place, you go in without fear. You just go and you trust it. And then everything starts to unfold. And it's the most magical thing I've ever experienced. Yes. And I think that, you know, I can, I can say hand on heart that, that there are some truly uh, physical representations out there of, of what it can do um, yes. for myself. And I, I can recognize them now looking backwards. So I think one of them is, um, we talk a bit about synchronicity and there have definitely been occasions where something has come out that you either that I felt was input that I felt was important and, and I've either been shown it in physical form fairly soon after in the real world or recognized it or you and I have both come to it simultaneously yes and not shared it and then and then and then shared it and the other one's gone Oh, that's a bit spooky. Mm. And um, and then and actually, and all, the, the second one is um, personal relationships. I've I've seen a marked improvement in the the quality and love of the relationships I have with other people, certain yeah. other people. And then the third one is um, being able to recognise in real time um when it's your ego driving things that's a big one yeah mm -hmm. and, and not necessarily do anything about it you don't you know but just to just to recognize yeah and and and, and i must confess that you know still to the to this day even last week i'm still not there in terms of being able to do that all the time good you're never there and probably you? probably won't ever <laughs> 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 and I think also with this, the, the thing I really wanted to um, this to be is that people can tap in and listen into what we're talking about. Because what I found is having the experience is one thing, but because a lot of it gets forgotten because it's a different frequency almost. You, you go into a different frequency, you get a lot of great information. And when you come back to this frequency, you don't quite have access to it. But once we start talking about it, then things start showing up. Connections are made that I had forgotten when I journeyed, let's say, or connections are made with some of the insight that you have. And I think, oh, that's amazing. Uh, the, the toric field was one of them, I remember, that really blew me away because I don't see it. But you described it. I thought, yes, that's what it is. I can, I can feel it. And I think the importance of this particular podcast and the thing that I want us to stay on as much as we can over however many episodes we have 
is that people understand that if they're doing it, keep doing it. If you don't have anybody to talk to, shoot us some messages, shoot us some questions, and we'll try to answer them as best we can. And that will help everybody because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I, I, one of my guesses about where a lot of people are is that in the world is that a lot of people probably have very close relationships with other people. And they maybe have a sort of a select group, but do they have somebody that they could say absolutely anything to out of any words in the entire world? I would say that's rare. And how uh, I think it would be, I think it would help people if they had a place they could go to where they could say anything. And, and not be met by any judgment. Yeah. Just love. Yes. And it's hard because we're supposed to get it right. There, I don't believe there is any such thing. I think that's just a construct. Because yes. there are times when I've just you know felt I need to go do this or do it like that and no idea why. And then find that's exactly what I needed to do. But I had no idea why I decided to do it. It just I felt compelled to do it. And it doesn't mean yeah. do stupid things and, and not consider, but because as you, as you do the journey, the heart tends to open and the brain tends to quiet, then you're guided by the true you because it's not your head, it's your heart. Yeah. And I think that over time, I'd be interested to see how our, our language around this sort of subject changes as if and when individuals start to talk to us about it because I, I do believe that we are constrained by our language into truly describing what it is to be a human being yes uh, and and that element of it fascinates me well it's said that our experiences are determined by the um by our vocabulary we describe things to ourselves and that's how we make sense of them. So the greater your vocabulary, the more full your experience is. Well, what you and I have found is that when, so when you went through and did the big one that time and, and I said, what was it like? You said, I can't describe it. I knew you were there because you, words don't touch this stuff. Yes. And I think that I'm not necessarily saying that this podcast needs to come with a health warning on it. Maybe it does. Maybe but it does. <laughs> I, I would be remiss of me not to say early doors that um, going on this path, whilst incredibly insightful, euphoric, whatever what words you want to use, um, it can also be a little dicey at times. Um, you can then, you can, you, there are peaks and troughs. Yes. Because in, you know, effectively um, what, what has happened for us on a number of occasions is you have, there's a, a piece of karma comes along that you just have to clear. Whatever it is, sub says to you, if you want to go further, you just need to remove this or you need to look at this. And, and you end up in some occasions sort of self therapizing, I guess. Yes, it, it is a form of that. Uh, I just keep tripping over stuff until I think, you know what, I ought to pick that up and tidy it. <laughs> because I, I, it just, you know, it's been a while. Oh, you know what, I think I'll do that. Um, because it keeps revisiting. The thing I love about this stuff is if you don't get awakened gently, you will get awakened roughly, but you're going to get awakened. <laughs> yeah. So there's been a few occasions where we've chatted and <clears throat> I sort of feel like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. Well, I'm nice like that. Yeah. But it's but but uh, but also <clears throat> now I know that that's part of it. Yeah. And I, I have no fear of that. That's the thing. the The greatest benefit I've gotten from the amount of uh, meditation or journeying that I've done, and I've probably done it at least once and mostly twice a day for about two and a half years. Um, is that you lose the fear. And that, in with my upbringing, is amazing. So this is 
our welcoming podcast, really, to say to people, look, if you're in a weird situation, you think something's happening, you might be getting woken up or that you're getting, you know, information that you don't know where it comes from and you don't know who to talk to, um, you can, there are many sites that you can learn how to do this, but this is more about saying, look, this is more of a support where we support each other because each person's questions will be the questions that other people may have wanted to ask, but just didn't. And, and then when they get not an answer, but another view or a, a, a point of view, then it might just open it up or maybe just say, you know what? It's okay. Just carry on, you know, whatever it is, just carry on because it's all, it's all good. And that to me is, is what this is all about. It's not about, you know, it is about guides, not gurus really. So in the next episode, I think both you and I have got some questions from people that we know that they have put to us in and around yes. this subject. Yes. That we could spend some time going over those and relating it to what we've been through. And that might help people to get a better understanding of what we're talking about. Yeah. And what we'll do is we'll put a link also to our email in the comment section and um, people can contact us with questions. And if we can get through them and happily, you know, we'll give it our best shot. And see what happens. Amazing. Yeah. What a, what a time, what a time. So I'm going to say this will bring us to the end of this episode. We'll keep it short and sweet. Um, and we hope that some, you know, people listening might get some value out of this. Uh, so if, uh, you know, your questions are vital because that's what we're going to feed off. It's no good us just, you know, we can talk all day and just compare notes and that's great. We're happy to do that. But to me, the questions are vital to the mission. So please ask away and we'll do our best. Uh, also, uh, if you enjoy the show, uh, please rate it and review it as best you can. Uh, and be sure to come back next week uh, for our next discussion, whatever that will be. So until then, this is Greg. And Tom. Reminding you to open your heart and to pay attention. See you next week, Greg. Cheers, Tom.